Hello, my name is Soraya Mia. And I'm Mark Sadiq. And you are watching Lebaran Awani. All right, so we are very, very excited to be here in Ruma Pute today, our official sponsor. And we are especially excited because yes, yeah. the past two years, it was a global pandemic. And yeah. we could not celebrate Hari Raya as, as normal. And this is actually the first year that we could actually celebrate Hari Raya as close to normalcy as possible. Yes, as, as close as possible. Transition into yeah. the city. Yeah. So um, today, we are actually going to talk about um, the fashion, arts, and cultures industry's recovery as we transition to Indonesia. But before that, let me ask you, how is your Raya this year? Uh, it's going to be a very exciting one. Uh, first of all, when we talk about Raya, we talk about food. We talk about family, uh, family time, bonding time with family members. So yeah, it's going to be a very interesting one since for the past two years. Yeah, exactly. And aside from food and family, of course, uh, when we think about Raya, we think about, you know, fashion, culture, and tradition. Yes, right. And today, uh, we have two familiar faces who are from different backgrounds, but uh, they share the love for fashion, arts, and culture. So thank you so much, Wulan, for being here today, and thank Elena. You. So Wulan Dari Herman, she is an Indonesian actress, uh, model, and also television host, who was Miss, Indi uh, Miss Universe Indonesia 2013. And now she resides in Malaysia, and um, she is also very active in the fashion industry. Thank you for having me today, guys. It's a pleasure to it's have you. It's a pleasure to have you. And our second guest today is um, Alena Morang. She is a half Italian and half Sarawakian. She is a born, Borneo born musical artist who is very well known for playing the traditional instrument um, uh, sape. And uh, interestingly, she is one of the first performer, professionally performer of um, uh, the, in the instrument of sape, right? So it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for having me and Selamat Hari Raya. Selamat Hari Raya. It's so um, awesome to have you guys today on Hari Raya. Yes, it's, it, is, it is a pleasure to have you both. So um, interesting, fa interesting fact is that both of you guys, um, both of you ladies have hometowns across oceans. And, um, and for, the past, for the past two years, uh, of the pandemic, travel has not been so easy. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So my question is for Wulan. Uh, you have families both in Malaysia and Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So how is the mood celebrating Raya, celebrating Raya during the past two years? Wow, is it really, um, is it tough for me actually? Because my first time Raya was here is during pandemic. So I oh. moved here like basically like two, two or three years ago. So actually lockdown and then we, we live here during the pandemic. So I'm so sad because like almost three years I didn't see my family. So okay. thank God to the WhatsApp call, video yeah, call, you know. Right. For me now, it's, mm. as long as my parents is healthy and happy, it's, mm. it's, 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 it's alhamdulillah, yeah. Alhamdulillah, exactly. Yeah. So this year, are you actually um, planning to go back to Raya on the, uh, maybe the, the third Raya onwards? I mean, to Indonesia? Yeah, this year I'm planning to go back maybe uh, Raya 7. So because I I'm going to spend Raya here with my husband family. So okay. after that, maybe I will go back to Jakarta for two weeks. Yeah, finally, after three years. I see. Wow. Right. Yeah. I can't so imagine. It's yeah. hard you know, to believe we've exactly. just been in this pandemic. Exactly. Yeah, but then... now we learn, like, if you, we, you still give Allah, uh, give you healthy and happy, you have mm. to be grateful. Because we see along mm. during the pandemic, mm. so many dear friends and parents, like, pass mm. away because of the pandemic. So yeah. If definitely. you still have parents, so mm. you must be grateful. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's uh, definitely time for me to go back to Thailand, <laughs> which my dad is over <laughs> exactly. there. Exactly. But anyway, I have a question for you, Elena. So last year, 2021, was um, Malaysia was in the midst of lockdowns, right? But your music video for the song Warrior Spirit actually won two international awards. Wow. So tell us yeah. how that happened. You know, I have to say, I think now it's at eight international awards. And oh, wow. wow. Okay, I missed that out. <laughs> Amazing. Good job. Good job. Good job. Great. Yeah. I have to say, it's incredible because we actually started shooting in 2020 and then we had to add on extra shooting days in 2021 so it was this really long process where so many artists came on board and um, you know just offered themselves as artists as dancers as wardrobe as crew um, as musicians and i felt that you know in a time where everyone but especially artists are struggling so much yeah, i just felt that 
so um, so touched that mm -hmm. they came mm -hmm. on board and 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 made this music video. It's just a beautiful yeah. creation and. Um, it came out at exactly the right time because we were going into another lockdown just mm -hmm. as yeah, it had absolutely. come out. And I think everybody needed that warrior spirit in them. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's a silver lining. Like not, not everything about the pandemic is bad, I guess I would say. Like yeah. at that yeah. time specifically, is it, yeah. you had you know, support from all of these artists who actually were impacted as well. And that, that's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about your album, Sky Songs where most of the songs are inspired by the nature elements like sky, moon, uh, wind and stuff like that. So I, w I, would, I would like to know um, how it all started. How and it all started? Yeah. How Sky Song started or how all uh, how the, the longer journey? Uh, yeah. Maybe you can talk about what inspires or what is the message hidden uh, in the songs because um, these days the modern songs, we don't, we don't naturally um, listen to songs that is um, nature based. So maybe yeah. talk about it. Yeah. I always laugh because I say I don't write love songs, mm -hmm. I don't write mm -hmm. breakup songs, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, like right. everything else that's all about on the, energy. Yeah, yeah. That everything else that's on the radio. And mm. for me, with Tapet music, um, I started playing when I was 10 years old. Uh -huh. mm. And we just always learned that our music is very closely related to nature. The lyrics are about yeah. the rivers, mm -hmm. um, being together with my friends, um, about eating together. So. Uh, at one point, uh, when I was much older and grown more as an artist, I kind of thought about what it meant to be a Sapit musician. How did my ancestors write? Mm -hmm. And they were inspired by nature. So that's I how see. Sky Songs came about. Mm. Very nice. um, to follow up the questions, uh, most of the songs are in climate language, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So uh, how, the, how, the, how the process of, you know, um, expressing the songs in a different language and perhaps if there's any uh, future plans of doing the song in maybe other languages as well. <laughs> uh, so I sing in both Kalabit and Kenya language mm -hmm. which um, can also be found in Indonesia mm -hmm. and in Kalimantan mm -hmm. and they're endangered languages and to be oh. honest uh, I'm not fluent in Kalabit or Kenya but my dad is Kalabit mm -hmm. so actually learning the songs and writing the songs is a way for me to learn the language and the process is that I will write and draft the lyrics and then I'll send it to my dad or my auntie and ask them if, they, if it makes sense to them uh, and then they might think they can work it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then we just, you know, put it to, to music and that's how it goes. Mm. All right. Interesting. That's, that's yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. So uh, this question is for Bulan. You actually just got back from Indonesia mm -hmm. for fashion shoots and I yeah. believe you were actually um, back in the your uh, beauty camp, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So uh, as we transition into endemicity, how does the um, fashion industry actually differ, the recovery of the fashion industry differ in Indonesia and also in Malaysia? What did you see as different? No, I think the, this year, uh, I'm talking a lot about my designer friends and then I ask them, how's the pandemic impact to their business? But surprisingly, mm -hmm. during the last two years, the pandemic, people are still shocked. So they still shocked. Oh. It, even they're not going for Raya, uh, open house, right? Mm -hmm. But actually, they still shop. Of course, it's not the same as the no normal, but mm -hmm. people survive. So I'm so so glad because the designers and everyone in this industry, of course, they are, they are really tough now, tough moment for everyone, but they're still doing this business is really good. And also in Malaysia, all the designers, they're still doing the fashion show, mm -hmm. and then I'm still doing a lot of Raya shoot. Mm -hmm. So it's good, everyone back again to the What about normal. online? Like uh, I, I have noticed that many fashion shows are now based online. Is, is that still relevant in the fashion industry? Yeah, in, uh, surprisingly last week, I was in Jakarta, so mm -hmm. I attend like three fashion shows during Ramadan, and all people calm and happy. And of course, before you get into the show, you have to do the, the swap mm -hmm. and the etiquette test. Mm -hmm. And everyone not really use masks anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised. Wow. Unfortunately, we have to wear masks now. I can show my lipstick and then my makeup, you know? So, so now I did shoot three after this until you must. So Nobody knows surprised. what lipstick color it is, so it's a secret. <laughs> so this is the, the difference, I feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. the, in, in Jakarta, people really mm -hmm. live in the new norm. That's yeah, right. Yeah. I'm glad it's picking up again and I'm glad yeah. everybody's just, you know, back yeah. at it. And it doesn't yeah. matter, you know, pandemic, endemic, yeah. anything. We just yeah. got to keep moving. Exactly. Yeah, you know? yeah. Life must go on. Yeah. Speaking about keep moving, um, as we are moving to the phase of endemicity. So in, in, in your opinion, do you think that um, this pandemic has somehow um, 
given a huge impact to the fashion industry, as in maybe um, the way designer, uh, maybe the way designer have to design the masks, for yeah. example, for the fashion show and stuff like that. Because I think it's very interesting to see yeah, how pandemic has impact the world uh, in general, especially in the fashion industry. Yeah. So what do you think about uh, maybe we are moving forward to um, a faith where uh, it could be a new era for the designer to design a, a very fashionable masks. Yeah, or, so yeah. Et cetera, yeah. Yeah, that, that's good, right? Because a lot of creative designer they mm. are they are thinking how to survive during the pandemic. We saw mm. be, before they, they have a lot of like a collection, but now mostly they have their own mask. Mm. So I think this is really good. And mm -hmm. every every designer also in Indonesia in Jakarta, mm -hmm. the the just the the way they dress also, and then. A lot of business run because of the mass and then the, the also the face shield. Yeah, face shield. Yeah, 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 they're yeah. also doing that. So it's mm. good. At least during the pandemic, the business to run. This is I the see. most important that's, thing. That's right? a great thing. Yeah. Speaking that's of masks, the mask is really, really good. Really yeah, yeah. I really yeah. love the design. Oh, this I is like a good one. Songke. Yeah, it's Songke. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Elena, <laughs> you represent Borneo so well. Um, not only, you know, how you're, you're the way you dress, but also in, in your music and, and um, the way you portray yourself. So what actually inspires you to continue to um, advocate for you know, ethnicity and culture in an ever-changing world and a modern world, especially? Gosh, that's a big question. Um, I just, I love Borneo and Sarawak so much. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, and I just think, uh, you know, the people are beautiful, culture is beautiful. It and is. Um, I just wanna share the stories to the world. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, we are going to take a quick break before uh, we continue our discussion on the fashion, arts, and cultures industry's recovery as we transition into endemicity. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. <music> Hi, welcome back to Lebaran Awani with me, Saraya Mia. And me, Mark Sadiq. Welcome back. And uh, Saraya Mia, I want to talk about your um, beautiful outfit today, oh, tonight. Thank you. Yeah, it's very beautiful and so bright. So, um, Lady in red today. Yeah, it's very bright. <laughs> uh, maybe you want to talk about your your feeling about how you how you spent your raya uh, yesterday. Well, okay, so first, um, I really love this outfit because it, yeah. it's like, I, I'm actually a, a very traditional sort of person, so I, yeah. I, I like the choice of this outfit. It's actually quite vintage looking, and I also like yours. Thank by you. The by the way, I, I like how the, the color of your outfit is matching with your skin tone, so oh, it's really, really nice. I yeah, do, it's really I nice. Know, it's nice. nice compliment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he gave me a nice compliment right there. <laughs> All right, okay, yeah. moving on. Right, so, right. okay, fashion, as I was mentioning just now, it's ever changing, but then it also recycles, right? Yeah. So yeah. I want to ask the both of you, um, as things like arts, culture, I mean, fashion also, you know, um, changes, how do we actually plan to stay relevant in, you know, in the future as things keep changing? Anyone want to go first? Um, I think uh, you, you just have to, for me, Mm -hmm. Like when you talk about fashion, I'm not really like into what is trend now. For oh, me more like I like to use like that like 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 this what I wear today. Maybe yeah uh, tomorrow I can wearing with jeans, I can wearing with the, the other things. That's what I like know? about so you. So it save a lot of not just save a lot of money, but mm -hmm. also it's good for our future, right? And you don't need to change exactly. every time. Recycle. Yeah. So I'm more like very I don't know if that's very traditional, but I don't really into it to trend. So yeah. meaning, meaning to say that whether whether you're following the trend, you create the trend itself or recreate the trend. Yeah, they right? create that yeah. because it, yeah. like mean you can wear that many times, like, not just like yeah. one time. Sometimes people like one time you post on Instagram and, and the baju is done. Yeah, right. So yeah. for me, I think I wear it many times. Mm. I yeah. love that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, for me, I think a lot of people know that I like to kind of like infuse the traditional with mm -hmm. the contemporary, mm -hmm. and um, if it's just a white t-shirt jeans and some uh, Dayak beads, for example. Mm -hmm. like the like is so nice. Yeah, yeah these were handmade by um, an auntie. Wow, wow. very nice. Sarawak. So I like little things like that, and little handmade things as well. The touch, yeah. yeah. But yeah. they have a meaningful on it, right? Yeah. yeah. What about for your music? Um, 
you know, it's very traditional. Is it is it just niche? Like in the future, will that ever? Will that yeah. still? How do you plan to actually, you know, make it a thing forever? I mean, funny story. I never planned for any of this, right? Mm. Uh -huh. And I thought about it. And if we look in the past, we look at my great grandmother. The songs that she sang, she would have changed them for her own time. She would have changed the lyrics, and my grandmother changed the lyrics that my great grandmother sang. And what we're doing now is the same thing. We just um, take the music, change the lyrics, change the song, add in some guitars, yeah. some drums, and just make it relevant to our time. So I hope that whatever we're writing now, we'll also, you know, the, the next generation can take it, yeah. adapt it, and then, you know, make it relevant. Because I think I that's, really how, like that. yeah. Yeah, that's how I, culture I really it stays. It has to evolve. Mm -hmm. It has to adapt. You cannot yeah. preserve it, it yeah. you know? I really like the idea of you know fusing the traditional one and the current traditional one. So speaking of tradition, right? So I have a question for both of you too. Um, so the pandemic has impacted um, the way we we gather. I mean, as in traditional gathering in our family. So uh, now that the curbs lifted, so how does that make you feel uh, about being able to gather again to meet your, to meet your family again? Because I believe pandemic has prevented us from meeting our family for quite. So yeah, long, at least for in about Malaysia, two years. with the lockdowns, yeah. on and off, uh, on, on and off, yeah. and especially when it comes to family gathering. So how <laughs> so does that make you feel? Done. I mean, I really miss my parents. Uh, I, I live in KL and they're based in Kuching. Mm -hmm. So just being able to see them and spend time with them. I actually just got back from That's Kuching lovely. to see them. Yeah. Uh, but to be honest, the big like open houses that we used to have before and the big gatherings give me a little bit of anxiety. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> I get it. I know. After yeah. After spending two years in a lockdown, yeah. how do you feel? Yeah, now like every time we go, even to my mother in the house, they say, oh, please do the... RTK. The yeah. RTK. So RTK. Yeah, this is the new yeah. norm. Everywhere we go, so you just have to do that. Mm -hmm. And then, this this fine. As long as we can sit together, eat together, enjoy mm -hmm. the raya, which is, we missed mm -hmm. already two years, right? So. For me, this the, the tradition is still is still there. Mm. Even we missed the last two years, but mm. now let's let's make it happen. Like let, but of course we have to do the the, 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 the yeah. 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 Remember, Mia, we talked about it, like how we discussed um, on the impact of pandemic and how it may bring uh, some anxiety to some people yeah, to yeah, meet definitely. their family back. So it's very interesting to to know, right? Yeah. So, even yeah. even though with all of the new SOPs, but like I think yeah. <laughs> back to the whole, yeah. you know, yeah. trying to exactly. adapt. Yep. <laughs> this is also the same. We're just making the best out of what Every, we can. Yeah. Right? But exactly. something like funny that when you do like batuk or sneezing, I know. Oh no! You know, oh no! They run away. You know, the kids are very good. Everyone just sneezing. Oh my God, I wear in my mind, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, look now, exactly. you know, when you do sneeze, yeah. you have to be so yeah. careful. Yeah. Excuse me. Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, if you cough these yeah. days, it's like, stay away. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you okay? <laughs> okay. Okay, so now I want to ask you a little personal question. Now, so, Wulan, you are Indonesian, but you're married to a Malaysian, and you have two beautiful children. And also, Alina, you are half Dayak, half uh, European Italian. Yeah. So both of you are from a sort of mixed culture family. What's the best thing about being in a mixed culture family? Yeah. Anyone have yeah. a first question? It, because Indonesia and Malaysia is we, actually we are serumpun, right? Yeah. We are keluarga actually. Betul, betul. Just I, like, of course we have a lot of different things here also, mm -hmm. but I learned a lot of in Malaysian culture when I was here three years and then a lot of things are actually different. Even we are close, but a lot of things different. That's interesting. And then I love the differences. Like, mm -hmm. example like this. Mm -hmm. In in Padang, so my hometown, mm -hmm. when we eat lemang, we eat with something sweet. I was oh. so surprised when I see my husband eat rendang. And we tried <laughs> in lemang with rendang. I said, hey, what's wrong with you? Is <laughs> what's wrong with you? I don't eat rendang with sweet. So I now, was, now no. you accept it? I'm okay, but it's I don't still, know. It's still think it's sweet. Yes. What, sorry, but I don't eat it. See, what about, what about your okay, kids? Your husband won't watch this. It's really <laughs> different, yeah. yeah. See, what, what about your kids? Are they excited to go back to your hometown and then try the different culture, you know? Because kids very, are very excited. They're very young. Too. They've never yeah. been to Indonesia see, yet. Yeah. But yeah, yeah but are, they, are they, they, excited? Are, they will learn also mm. about Indonesia. But this, 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 the small thing I saw you about the lemang. Yeah. <laughs> Do they speak in Indonesia as well? Do you speak in Indonesia with them? Yes, yeah. Uh -huh, they speak in yeah, uh, Indonesia and Malaysia and English. Uh, okay, that's, that's great. That's great. That's, that's great. so beautiful. Yeah. 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 Multi language? Um, well, for me, I think just growing up in a very mixed household mm -hmm. was. Um, it opened my heart and opened my eyes a lot. So it's made me very adaptable to 
you know, work with all kinds of people and to uh, um, just to be exposed to many, many different experiences. Mm -hmm. um, I was always told I have to finish everything on my plate. Doesn't matter if you like it or not, because- uh -huh. Which side is this? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Which side is this one? <laughs> oh, the, uh, yeah, that's my Italian side. But okay. I, quite, quite interestingly, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Italian values and Asian values are very similar. Really? Really? Yes, like if you else? think about it, like Italian mothers are very, very strict, just like Asian <laughs> I did not mothers. Know that. I see. Yeah. Oh. I see. Yes, yeah, so a lot of my friends are quite surprised because they always say, like, mm. oh, but you know, it's not, aren't Western people a little bit more relaxed? Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, but my mom's Italian, you know, they're yeah. still quite strict. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, so nice. there's, there's a lot of similarities as well. I see. Mm. Okay, that's good. Do you find it a little bit hard to like accept who you are as a mixed person? I mean, as in when people ask you, that's a good question. Yeah, as, <laughs> because people usually ask you, what What are you? What are do you? Do you have difficult times in accepting who you are? As in, like who? Which who side is, am I? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Both. Yeah, or yeah. everything. I think she's. She probably has the same experience. <laughs> we all do actually. We all are. Yeah, we all are. <laughs> um, for me, the answer is yes. Um, mm -hmm. I went to SMK and mm -hmm. I had kids tell me to go back to my country. Oh my gosh, that's harsh. Yeah, and it was tough uh, up until my early 20s. Mm -hmm. And I actually think art and music helped me a lot through it to kind of work through that and work through identity, as you can mm -hmm. see in my work uh, mm -hmm. quite clearly. Um, but yeah, I've kind of, you know, settled with that now. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, that's amazing. So How do you, you relate um, music and finding your identity? I found that really interesting. Mm. Um, Interesting question. Yeah. It's it's kind of having a finding your roots keeps uh -huh. you rooted. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's something right. that you can't yeah. really explain um, on paper, but yeah. it's this feeling where if you're so you know if you know where you came from, then you know where you're going. Yeah. So I think right. just keeping exactly. close to my culture mm. really helped that. Mm. Mm. Well, I, I can tell that both of you are very strong, beautiful women. So is there any message that you, you would like to tell to every woman um, that, is, uh, that is out there? Especially who, in a very old the pandemic. Class. Yeah, especially yeah. maybe some of, some, some of them who, who lost their jobs or families, yeah, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So is there any message that you would like to tell them? Yeah. Well, I'd just like to tell all the women out there to keep strong. I know women are incredibly incredibly strong and yeah. i find that out every single day how strong we are and to just reach out to your sisters if you need any help or support yeah mm -hmm. yeah same same with me with uh, Elena also for me as a woman now we just have to support each other it's the most important thing yeah so. right yeah especially All during right. these times right well those were the thoughts of Ulan Dari Herman and Elena Morang. Thank you so much for tuning in to Lebaran Awani. I hope you guys will continue to watch Astro Awani. My name is Saraya Mia. And I'm Mark Sadiq. Selamat Hari Raya. Maaf Zahir dan Batin. Selamat Hari Raya.